Annie, I, I don't like whatsoever. <laughs> um, I think there's going to be some really sad background where like she's trying to impress her dad too. And her mom might've left the family. And then Bernie, he's like that way. Cause he's never been loved by anybody. So he's been shunned upon. And even with his own crew, everyone's like, dude, or Bert Holt, sorry, I call him Bernie because he reminds me of like Bert and Ernie. Um, <laughs> combined together. <laughs> oh my God, now I can't get out I, of my mind, Sash. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> like he has that just look. If his eyebrows morphed into one perfect it, Sesame God, Street character. It does. <laughs> now it's stuck in my mind. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be the perfect thumbnail. Welcome to Sasagio Sundays. This is episode three Woo! of the Attack on Titan final season. Uh, just aired today. Uh, I mean, another, I guess, another Reiner focused episode. Uh, we're still in the Marley, I guess, the Marley lore, but uh, pretty nice to have more backstory of what happened between Marley and uh, Reiner and the gang going to uh, Paradis. So. Uh, I just I'll say last week I was I think I was giving a lot of shit to Reiner saying I didn't really care much about like like the focus on him but I actually appreciate him more as a character this time because of this episode so definitely was that because he almost ended his life I mean more more than just that like I I kept saying how like it, it was just weird to me how he was kept denying everything but I think I I'm slowly starting to understand his character more and the, the struggle he's going through so. Did you actually know that he is Hajime Isamaya, Isi- Isayama's favorite character? No. So I think yeah, I think we were referenced. I think you were referenced that last week. Yeah. Someone did. It might have been off Probably air though. Me. Hmm. Indeed. Yeah, it might have been off air, but yeah, he, he's his favorite character. So I mean, it I guess it makes sense that they're really going into the history and that there's more to him than because like I was thinking back on everything that we've seen so far and up until this point, really the last time that you saw you guys saw him was. When they took uh, Emir, right? Uh, I think Other so, than like yeah. the stuff this yeah. season, yeah. Was he nine season three? Yep. Or I don't think. Well, oh, I... he was. No, he was. Yeah, was he was the, there. It was that final fight that they had. <laughs> yeah, I completely. I'm losing my mind. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, when he's hiding in the walls. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. How can I forget that scene with Levi too? Ridiculous. Anyways. Okay. Wait, Levi was there. What? Yeah, because, like, when he was hiding in the walls, like, he pops his head out for, like, a second, and then Levi just, like, throws himself off the wall to go try and kill him. Like, he doesn't even hesitate. It was really cool. It was well animated. Oh, okay. I digress. I forgot. Yeah, it was, because he, like, stabs him right through the throat, and he's like, if I didn't use my hardening, he would have killed me right there. Hmm. Yep. Yep, that was a pretty awesome scene. And, then you know, they took the giant rockets to his knee joints and tore his ACL. Yep. It was a... Good but times. yeah, so this week was a kind of a serious episode, I suppose. Um, I don't, well, you know, right? Reiner is going through a through a through a tough time. Is he suffering from Indeed. an inferiority complex? It seems like from a what? Like an inferiority complex because of uh, his father not wanting their family, and then figuring out that he wasn't the actual chosen warrior. Uh, it's, it was all due to Marcel kind of making him look I don't know if it's inferiority I think the complex. answer is, I mean, it might be part of it. Like, I'm sure that that, that he, that, I, I think he has so many things messing him up in the head right now that that's just like a part of it. And I think that's actually a smaller part. I think that a lot more of it is the decision that they made to go and attack um, Paradis, like when they did and how they did and everything that happened with that guy whose name I'm blanking on, their friend that got eaten by Amir. Marcel? Um, oh, Marcel. Mm-hmm. I think all of that yep. stuff like weighs on him a lot heavier and, and just feeling like he <laughs> sorry for my cats and just feeling that he uh, <laughs> he really betrayed everybody I think like because like, I mean it basically showed that he has some sort of like a personality break in one of the last seasons with what happened with Marco so I, th- I think that he's got every mental problem on the book pretty much at this point I mean it's hmm. I think it's like those like those war movies where he was really into the idea of being a soldier because he thought it meant being a hero and he basically dug his whole life for that and then like it's when he 
goes to paradise and he's he's const that's the part where he's constantly trying to like constantly try to think of everyone else as like the devil and like him constantly doing it is him trying to is his own defense mechanism trying to like justify so, justify yeah justify him like carrying on his mission because he right and then right now is it's it's that defense mechanism breaking down because like because it goes against everything he, he was like do it going for ever since he joined the army so it seems more like yeah. that yeah i'd say it all stems back to his childhood because father didn't want him father was a marlian mother was left with him they're both eldians but she's not proud of being an eldian because they're discriminated against in their world and so she kind of hammered home the message he took it to heart where it's like you need to go and do something to represent our people and become an honorary Marlian. Otherwise, we're always going to be ashamed. And I think, you know, he mentioned it earlier. He's like, I just want to make my parents proud. And so he goes off to war. His dad is just like, nope, don't want to deal with you at all. You disgust me and your whole family's going to bring a black mark to my family. And then his mom's like, yeah, you can do this. But he himself has mixed feelings about it because he realizes wow, this is really not what I want to do and I'm not that good at it and I haven't made anybody proud. So I think he's constantly seeking for a social pride and he can't find it. And that's why his character is the way he is because if you look at anybody who's filled with pride, they're pretty resolute in what they want to do and what they want to accomplish. But mm -hmm. because he comes from a background of two very different parents and he's always been less than the best... I think for him, it's just a constant, constant struggle of being himself versus being what others expect him to be. And uh, I think that's what you're seeing in the season. Very well put, Sash. Yeah. And that's why thank I'm, you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. That's why I'm starting to like him more as a character. Like, I really appreciate this episode uh, fleshing that out for me. So. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was really interesting I... to see like the dynamic between the three of them too, because that, that was something that I've been wondering about from the very get go. Like, because I, I remember thinking when we first started finding out that they were, um, uh, that they you know were not part of the, the walls, that they were outsiders, and I like I, I could tell that Bert Holt and um, Reiner had been very close, but Annie hadn't. She definitely seemed off from the rest of the cadets too, but she didn't seem particularly close to them. And so I really wasn't sure, like, how they interacted with each other at all. So I thought that this, it was very interesting to see um, all of their different feelings about their different mission and about each other and what they stand for through this episode. Because um, it was just a big question mark. Mm -hmm. I agree. I just find them, I can't get as emotionally involved with them. Like, even Reiner, understanding him, I get his picture, but I'm still like, dude, I'd rather just see you get crushed by a... Aaron right now Damn. like your whole body really? crushed like Damn. a yeah I oh my god <laughs> don't you guys feel like it's a little too late for him to have like a redemption arc no <laughs> I love uh, Reiner I, uh, I don't know so I don't, I don't Dude, know if you watch the show but it's like I'm seeing comments on Reddit it's oh, like a bunch of people are loving Reiner yeah, like I would have. Most I would have rather what happened the last episode where we all thought he committed suicide. I would have rather just, just <laughs> that just happened, happened. and then Annie. <laughs> yeah. But. I think they have an interesting dynamic. They're really well developed characters. I'm just not as emotionally involved in them. Like I, Annie, I I don't like whatsoever. <laughs> um, I think there's going to be some really sad background where like she's trying to impress her dad too, and her mom might have left the family. And then Bernie, he's like that way because he's never been loved by anybody, so he's been shunned upon. And even with his own crew, everyone's like, dude, or Bert Holt. Sorry, I call him Bernie because he reminds me of like Bert and Ernie. Um, <laughs> Combined together. <laughs> oh my god, now I can't get out of my mind, Sash. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Like, he has that just look. If his eyebrows morphed into one perfect it, Sesame god, Street character. It does. <laughs> now it's stuck in my mind. Oh my god. That would be the perfect thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I like... The storytelling is phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. And I thought this was a really good episode. It's one of those episodes where, at the end of it... I was like, what? It's over already because you show us Keanu Reeves' Aaron and you're like, what? He's got one leg? Bro, you, you can't do this to me. Um, wait, but wait, so I can't. That, that was Aaron at the end there? Yeah. Dude, that, oh, okay. that's what I thought. I'm like, dude, yeah, he's, he's got the Aaron. striped eyebrows. 
Dude, so, I, like I had to I had to rewatch the episode to see if there was any hints towards that being Aaron because I don't remember him showing up in the uh, in the village or being part of the. She actually the actually. Came back. I went back. And you right. watched the last episode. Uh, yep. I rewatched it and I saw the scene where mm-hmm. that kid was helping him. I was like, dude, how did they pull this shit off? Mm-hmm. That it's was so some good. Awesome shit. Oh my god. Wait wait wait. So amazing. I did not get that. Say that one more time. No. Okay. So, All right. so in episode two, do you remember? Do you remember the part where all of those LDN yeah. soldiers were in line, and the Marleyan soldier like screamed "boom" at them to basically trigger their uh, PTSD. Uh, PTSD? Yeah, and they all yes. fell to the ground. And Fal- Falco was talking to one of them, and it was Aaron. Aaron was in that line. Oh, wow. yeah, I did not, okay. I did not catch this at all. So. It's impossible to tell if you haven't read the manga. So I mean, you know, it it was impossible. No, well, the thing was at the end of this episode when they did that close up with him and his eyes, I was like, hey, he looks really familiar. It feels like three years older. Is that Aaron? But then there was any there wasn't any hints. And now when I looked at the last couple episodes and this episode to see if there's any hints towards it, I I couldn't figure it out. So I was going to ask you guys to see if that was him or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, see. Crazy. I wasn't sure, but uh, you know me, I just have wild theories. I just go for them. Yeah. But as yeah. soon as they f- like, they've done this trick one more one uh, previous time with the Titan. Right before I was watching it, I had no idea Aaron turns into a Titan. But yeah. then when we assume he's dead, he got swallowed. I'm like, dude, that Titan looks just like Aaron. So yeah. now, anytime someone looks just like someone, I assume that's just <laughs> them or a clone, and and it's you know it works pretty well. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm like, he lost a leg. He looks like Keanu Reeves now. I'm, I'm in. But uh, our chat, uh, Killjoy agrees that basically, like, uh, Attack of Titan has, like, a bunch of those just small details. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think no. about an arm band being on the wrong arm. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. Oh, like, probably. He's not, like, he's not, like, an actual person on the land, so he forgot and put on the wrong arm. I think so, yeah. Oh. You know? Okay. Plus, I think what gave it away for me was his speech at the end, because he talked about like most people are forced into war because of certain circumstances, and say so don't they don't have the will really to survive past it. They kind of just succumb, or uh, sorry, not succumb, but succumb to their circumstances. And you know that was him. His mom died. Dad ran away. Families crushed. Whole villages destroyed because of titans. And so he has no choice but to hate them and go into this crazy frenzy war. Whereas other people. They have something pushing them from the inside, like his best friend Armin, who thinks, oh, there's something beyond this war and beyond these walls. And I think there's hope for humanity. So I thought it was a really good speech capturing the motivation and the situation that most people fall into in this world. So when I when I heard that, I'm like, dude, he's, he's talking about himself and that's got to be Aaron. But is it really Aaron? Is it some weird timeline mutation? Is it a clone? That's the part I can't put my finger on. But yeah. Well, that's the part we still technically don't know, I suppose. Man. I Indeed. I didn't pick any of this up. What am I even doing here? <laughs> Bro, what are you what doing? What am I doing in my life? Oh. Um, I also thought I think that I think that going back to Reiner just for a second here, I think that one mm-hmm. thing that I really liked that they highlighted in this episode is uh, like comparing him and some of his situation to Aaron. Like when it showed him giving advice to Aaron about how to, you know, do what he needs to do and it flashed back to reiner always having like dealing with not being the best right and how he kept on moving forward and i feel like they're starting to like set up some comparisons between the two of them and i don't know when they showed those scenes it's just especially oh my god especially to that scene where it showed all the cadet all the cadets when they were kids again and Bertholdt was there sleeping in a weird position and they were telling the weather based off of like how what weird position he was sleeping in i was like oh my god these were the good old days like it felt so painful now looking back on it i really liked those bits i thought that was great no i thought that was really well done too and then all of a dude Bernie was just an experiment so he's basically a World War II atomic bomb experiment because that's what they were treating him as right when he was transforming into Colossal Titan and then I noticed this too I just thought about it is uh, you know in World War II Hitler thought the pure bloods would be blonde hair and blue eyes yet in this world it's the opposite like th- those are the people that are discriminated against primarily I'm saying because the purest bloodline Diana whatever her name is Laura Croft um She's got the blonde hair. Armin has the blonde hair. Reiner has the blonde hair. All these Eldians that are probably pure bloods have the blonde hair. And 
there's got to be some connection here. I'm telling you, it's one giant incest family, and I don't know what it is. It's cloning, it's stem cell research, whatever it is. Um, I mean, they did mention rural blood has something to do with it, too. So, um... It's been diluted, man. It's been diluted. Hence why you got people with mud blood now who can transform into titans. Yeah. I feel like that's not when you say mud blood, but... Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, it's just uh... a Harry Potter reference. That's that's what I'm, all, my, all our Harry Potter fans who are also yeah. listening. Yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. everybody no, no. got that, didn't they? No? Oh, I got it, yeah. Well, that's, no. I, I was confused, because I know it's from Harry Potter, but I was like, am I missing something? <laughs> like, is there something like that here, too? But, uh, okay. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to think if there's anything else to talk about for the, like, what to touch on. Um, I will say that um, I, I think I'll agree mainly on Sasha's point. Like, it was a nice redemption for Reiner, but, like, yeah, I don't really care if he lives or dies really i'm i'm still more for like aaron in the crew so i mean i don't want him to die as much as sash but like i just mm. i sympathize with his character more but like yeah i don't think i don't know it's just it just feels like it's still not enough for redemption i guess for me just because like he's just like he just kept denying so much of like his his basically his war crimes like during the whole like paradise part so like and trying to justify that for himself so like that's the main thing that like that that keeps me from completely redeem redeeming him. Dude. Uh, well, I mean, at, at I, that point, like, what else is he supposed to do? I guess. I mean, he still believes in a lot of the stuff that he went there for. He obviously became close to his comrades, and he learned that things are not at all the way that they're taught in Marley. But it still doesn't change the fact that Marley is in a really precarious position in the world, and that he has a lot of responsibilities to a lot of people. And I mean. I think that I don't think he was just trying to justify it like for himself. I really think it was actually like a mental break, like a couple of times. I feel like that's what the show is trying trying to tell us when he had like forgotten that he told uh, Annie well, and Bertolt okay. to you know if he if he betrays Marley and like goes on to help out Paradis, then I'll consider that a redemption. I'm just saying not from, not just mm -hmm. from this point. Yeah, yeah. I think there are one that's of fair. two ways I. He could redeem himself, in my view. One is he grabs all the Eldians. He's like, Gabby, shut your bitch ass up. We're going to help these people on Paradise Island as well as everybody else. We're going to form a giant crew um, with Aaron, Mikasa, Levi, and even Captain Irwin's one arm that just kept like in the freezer. They're like, we're going to bring it back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happens is in the midst of a battle against anti-tank weaponry, uh, it looks like Aaron's about to go down. He's missing like two limbs. He's exhausted. Steam is coming off his body. His jaw's open, and they're about to just shoot a bullet straight down his jaw through his nape. And then Reiner jumps right in front of him, but all his armor's been just abused and completely removed down to zero. And he takes that ultimate bullet for Aaron. He's like, bro, LD, it's forever. All right, so that's one way I could see him redeeming himself. The other way was if in this episode... We got those little montages of him rolling in bed, not being able to sleep, and then him <laughs> putting the mouth of his gun. And then you see him like in the shower, the oh water's God. dripping down his face, and he puts his like hand on the shower, and he's like, I'm going through changes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Those are the only two ways he could redeem himself. Duly noted. <laughs> Man, what are you smoking, bro? Can I, can I, I can't about that second one, but... <laughs> Bro, you, I think that you would have liked that. No, I'm, but I'm just saying. Um, I, I get know, it. I, I get it. But I've heard a lot of Sasha's theories, and I, I think that one sounds just as realistic as some of the other ones I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. It's for me. I don't really like his character because, like as you guys mentioned earlier, he's kind of comparable to Aaron, right? And then he's just kind of throwing these situations, and he's just doing his best to deal with it. But uh, based on from what I've been seeing so far, whenever it comes down to it, this guy's always trying to find an easy way out. He doesn't really follow through with it. Like I noticed that um, when I was watching the recap movie, and he was on the the wall with Aaron, and then he told Aaron straight up that he was a titan, that he should join their cause and join their team or whatever. Um, and then when Aaron denied it, he was like, "Oh man, what am I doing? Like I fucked up. I shouldn't have told him all that. Yeah, I'm just like messing around." Or uh, in this situation, where when he found out that uh, he wasn't the chosen one, he kind of had this uh, 
it's panic attack. I mean, I guess the fact that like some Titan came up and ate Marley didn't really help. But you know, he he ran away. He wasn't like able to control his uh, like his mental state, and he kind of just lost it. And I guess when everything calms down, he's able to put up this like facade, thinking that he's going to be okay. He's going to be this this crazy good leader that can like carry on the mission. But uh, he he can't ever seem to really follow through. And I think it's mainly because his 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 ideas of justice or his foundation is on this shaky foundation. And it's just all crumbling apart. And that's probably why he's resorting to suicide at the very end. And I feel like if you're that type of character and it comes on and it comes down to you uh, like uh, resorting to suicide, I don't see how you can ever redeem yourself as a character. I feel like at this point, he's going to sacrifice himself to uh, like like find ways to for him to be satisfied with himself. Uh, so I'm not really a big fan of this character. Well, uh, I mean, everybody's entitled entitled to their own opinions. The only thing I would bring up there is that technically he wasn't even supposed to be there. Right. Technically, it was supposed to be. Uh, I can never. Those wow. two brothers. It was supposed to be the guy's brother that was there. Wow. It was like and it wasn't, Porky or P- Porcho or something. I don't know. Oh yeah, Porco. Yeah. Mm. There you go. Porco. Um, and so he wasn't Sounds supposed terrible. to be there, and I think these people knew that about him, and that's why they didn't want him to be there. Of course, they got swayed somehow, but well, he he wanted to be there. So I mean, like, this yeah, is, this I mean, is what, if you this is what he wanted to sign up for, so I don't know how that changes it. Like, he still wanted to be there. Well, it changes think, it because uh, but it changes it because you're saying that the expectation is that like he should be able to like do these things that he wants to be there for, but. That I mean, just because people want things doesn't mean that they should always be able to get well, them. Like there should have been somebody stepping in there to to see he is not mentally capable of handling this mission. But well, that right. got it's, twisted. It's not like he was like sad that he got chosen. He was like super happy that like he was. Well, no, chosen. yeah, because he's a kid. He doesn't know any better. I mean, he's never been in war before. That. I mean, I'm just trying to like trying to just explain it a little bit from the other side, like stuff that I know that they're trying to explain. But I mean, you guys. I mean, you guys can have whatever opinions you want. No, I mean, it, it's fair. In the beginning, when they were going through the slideshow of the different Titans, they even mentioned like, oh, yeah, we chose him to be um, Armor Titan because of his devotion, because he's so steadfast in his beliefs. Right. And it makes sense because that's the persona he's given everybody, like the perception that he's honorary Marley and he's doing everything he can to become, um, you know, a good military service dog. But on the inside, what makes him a better character is because of the conflict that Ku mentioned. I'm just saying, better doesn't necessarily mean I'm in. Like, there could be some pretty terribly written characters, and I might like them just based off of my personal choices. But at this point, I'm just not bought into his story to the point where I'm like, yo, man, I I feel so bad for you, Reiner. Let me pat you on the back and give you a $500 welfare check. Like, no, man, get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) Get out of here, man. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like at this point, if you sympathize with him, it might just be out of pity and not with his actual character. Um, oh yeah, for sure. A lot of it is pity, right? Yeah, so, I, def- I, think... I pity the hell out of him. I think it's rough. <laughs> yeah, and if you want all to of us or put it in like an IRL perspective, it's like I hate people like that, right? You put on this big facade, you you act like you're like you're you're the shit, and then when it comes out to it, you you always fail to perform, and that's especially in in war or in the military, like that's that's horrible. Like you're just putting everyone around you in a bad predicament if you're that mm-hmm. kind of guy. So I personally don't like that character because of that. Yeah, there was a lot of times he did let people down. You're absolutely right. Right. I, I want to see Ryan him now. just commit to something. Just commit like wholeheartedly. And I think that's that's what's going to happen. If I had a prediction for his character, I think within the next three episodes, he's probably going to make a big life-changing decision. And that's going to be either the full buy-in from fans. They're going to be like, oh, redeemed. Or it's going to be like, Bro, why did you go that route? Oh, so that's that's my kind of. Uh, I feel like there's foreshadowing to that because you don't spend this much time taking a look at his character and mm-hmm. him putting a shoddy in his mouth with saliva up in there and doing it kind of like a slow slide out of his mouth, and he's just like, ah, <laughs> right? You don't do that for anything, um, sure. or for nothing. Sure. So, I think I think there's some major decision making coming up, especially. With these whole uh, the the tie dye bears or whatever that family's called, you know he's about oh, to the, get involved the, with them. The 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 tibers, <laughs> tibers, whatever. Oh right, that that family. Yep. Yeah. Tiberius. I'm very excited to see that whole 
thing with the Tivers animated because, I mean, it's my fault, but I was reading through the manga so fast at that point that, like, yeah. there, there's a lot of detail that happens there that I never fully understood. So I'm really, hmm. really looking forward to that one. Hmm. I mean, I feel like at this point, he's just throwing everything out to the kids. So I feel like his time in the limelight is over and it's all about the kids in Era now. And it also feels like they're going to stay, uh, like, stay in Marley. They're not going back to the island. Because I'm assuming since Aaron's here, probably Mikasa's here, maybe Armin's here as well, and shit's about to go down before they go back to the island, if at all. Yeah, I I, I can agree with that. I feel like it's all on like the mainland now. Yeah. They're just going balls to the wall at this point. I just want to know more about that General Mussolini. You know, that guy who has like the crazy stern look that always just talks about them? Mm -hmm. That's the guy that I, I want to know more about him. Magda, thank you. I was like Macbeth, Mussolini, somewhere along the way. I know Taylor <laughs> probably picked in the middle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> <We're still laughs> One of those. Yeah. <laughs> Mid CD sleep world mattresses. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm very curious about these powers at play now. You mentioned this last week, Taylor. You're like, I wonder if you guys are curious about what's going to happen. Now I am, except for Zeke <laughs> and I pulled know, pork. I, I hope pulled pork gets. Gets roasted on a steak, man. God, you want to talk about a character that I just, like, I just cannot take at all. I think Zeke is one of the few characters in this whole universe that I just want to, I just want him to be put down. Oh, my God. Yep. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, I can get behind that. But I mm -hmm. think it's only because of the fact that he betrayed his parents. Uh, no, I don't really care about that. It's, it's more the fact that he, I mean, killed Irwin and, like, a whole bunch of people. And, like... I hate the way he talks about people. Like he's sitting there and in his head, he was like, you poor foolish people throwing yourself away for your cause. I feel sorry for you. But then he like takes so much pleasure in killing them all. Or at least that's how it feels like it, it, he feels. And I just, I can't stand him. He's so familiar than now. And I just, well, yeah. I mean, he even sold out his own parents. If that's not like a definition of more holier than now. I don't know what, but just yeah, don't like him. It's even worse. He was a kid when he did it. That's the yeah. worst part. Like, okay, if you're mm -hmm. an adult and you do it, you're like, okay, you made up your mind. There's something that probably caused it. But you're a kid. Mm -hmm. It just means you're a little bitch. So <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. I'm a pretty visual guy. So just that monkey, the way it looks, all like just weird, lanky. It reminds me of a One Piece mm -hmm. character named like Apu. I'm just oh, like, yeah. bro. I, oh, man. I, you just look nasty. Like, if that was a <laughs> like a like a nice titan in the woods and he's like come on i'll help you I'm like get the oh hell <laughs> so i just the way he looks and then even in human form he's got those stupid like i'm smarter than you glasses but i'm not and i'm trying to look cool with them and you know he just can't pull it off so and he smokes i mean come on that's really bad so for your health and he killed horses once again i remember that forever so zeke is like the bottom of the bottom wow. bro well, I'll just... And he tries like so hard to be cool too Where he's like do you want to know my biggest secret It's how I wipe my ass It's like oh that's so cool you're so funny man Yeah exactly he's one of those tryhards Where you're like oh gosh mm -hmm. Ah well, uh, Zeke Well he just He wasn't even in this episode we're just talking trash <laughs> <laughs> But I, was, I uh... just you know to Bring it back I just want to say episode was amazing uh, it's one of those, it's very rare in anime that an episode makes me feel like I just watched something and I want more of it because I'm like, oh, oh it's more, it went by so fast. Like I can't name too many episodes or shows that do that for me. So mm -hmm. like I said, even though emotionally I'm not like, yeah, I'm team Reiner now. Ha -ha, uh, I still loved it. I thought it was a, a wonderful episode. Yep. That's me too. At the end of the episode, I, I, I seriously couldn't believe it was over. Like. That was brutal. Waiting week by week is brutal. Never had to do that with Attack on Titan before. <laughs> me you neither. do now. Wait, but you read yep. it, so never mind. I know, but it doesn't change the fact that I get so excited. Like, you certainly can tell you. I was just pacing back and forth. I was like, man, I can't wait for the podcast tonight. I wonder what they're all thinking. I wonder how they all liked it. Can't wait to talk about it. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I yeah. hate how I hate how accurate that is. <laughs> <laughs> I was just expecting to be like, they killed my dog. <laughs> like, dude, there, there are no dogs. What's wrong with you? Ah, he just like pulls up <laughs> a grenade and blows everybody up at the hospital. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, but I don't know if anything. I think it was that ending that got me most excited for next week's episode. Hell uh, yeah! Same. Oh, dude. I, like, I didn't really care much for Reiner, so this episode was kind of a letdown for me. Cause I kind of, I kind of hate the lore dump too, just because uh, I don't really care much for these characters, and I didn't really watch uh, the second half of season two and season three altogether. So maybe that's mm. why. Oh, but yeah, I... but the. The ending definitely got me excited for the next couple episodes, though. I mean, I appreciate this episode because it finally brought back... It was, like, the connect, the link between, like, uh, Marley and Paradis. And, like, mm -hmm. I like seeing the backstory of, like, the three at the training camp. And, like, just the missing information we needed for, like, for their side during, like, the early Paradis days. So I really enjoyed that. I like how it's linking that. And then also... And then I guess I missed the end with Aaron. So, like, I didn't get that far. But now that I... Now that I know about it, like now I'm more excited that we're starting to, it's it's about to reach that breaking point where like things are like things big things are about to happen soon. So yeah, so I guess yeah. wild theory time. Uh, it, Aaron's it. leg is not gone for good. He's gonna cut that leg and then transform with this titan right in the middle of that city. He's gonna be like, Mikasa, Levi, assemble. <laughs> and then they're gonna take off their hoods and their mustaches and shit and just like come <laughs> crawling together with him. Um, oh, watch, man. they're gonna wreak havoc. Like their their whole plan is to attack Paradis, but they won't be expecting Paradis to be in Marley. Oh, oh. <laughs> attack on Titan. Yeah, no, I think that's kind of point. Like, it would be nice for that to happen too, because it'll be pretty ironic, right? Like, they vetted them, they vetted Paragus back in the days, and now it's like flipped the other way around. So I think that'll be pretty cool. Yep, and then it's going to tie back to the tie day tie dye bears because they're going to already have an alliance with Paradis because somehow you know Aaron talked to them. <laughs> he's like, he's like, bro, I lost my leg for the aliens, and they're going to be like, we're going to side with you guys. But then General Mussolini will be like, I got this, like. Flying Titan. It's gonna drop atomic bombs on you guys. This is what we'll be working on, Mr. Hitler. And Mr. Hitler's gonna be like, "Good, now I'll grow my mustache." Boom! All out war. I, I got you guys. Attack on Titan. Just <laughs> wild theories. Watch. One of these is gonna be right, and everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, the Messiah!" Yes. <laughs> you know what? I hope you're right, too, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too, man. Sasha. I don't know how it can get better than that. Sasha is secretly <laughs> oh, the prophet shit. of Ymir. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah. please. Oh, dude, that would be so good. Uh, yeah. But my body is definitely ready, guys. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure for the next couple episodes. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. we're going to wrap that up. Uh, anyone have any closing thoughts before we end this episode? I love the way that they ended it. That's it. Mm. Best agreed. ending ever. Just giant Double keys. agreed. Yeah. Uh, I'm just nope, a, nothing more for me. I'm just a scrub that didn't catch on anything with Aaron, so don't listen to me or anything I say. I don't shouldn't be on here. Dude, it's okay. You're on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that's doing anything, but hey, just lay it back. You don't have to worry about details, man. You just you know, just coast. Just roll with it, David. Just just roll with it. All right. So that's gonna be it for our uh, episode three discussion for Attack on Titan. Was it t t kind of was it Titan Tuesdays on Sundays? So <laughs> Titan Tuesdays on Sunday. <laughs> See you next Sunday. Yep. yep. So that'll be it. Uh, yeah, we'll be back next Sunday. Thanks for everyone joining us in chat, and thanks for all the comments you give us. So look forward to it. Thanks so, everyone. Thanks. thanks. Enjoy. And thanks. don't forget Sasageo. Yes. Sasageo. Don't, don't forget. Oh, Sasageo Sundays. Woo! There you go. All right. Could do that too. All right. Actually. We'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> We'll offer up. Bye. We'll offer up. Bye. Are you as steamy as a titan after it's transformed? Well, we've got the talk for you. <laughs> or David trying to, trying to speak again. Well, let's. I'm not as steamy as a Titan, so. Oof. Right, well then, let's get you our uh, steroid specialist. He'll inject you with a shot of his spinal fluid. Wink, wink. Let's talk about coup. <laughs> what yeah. it do? Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm not ready. Shoot me up, doctor. I've always wanted to get my balls shrunken.
Uh, Oof. Sounds like you've done the self-harm part. <laughs> oh, 